quick return mechanism is an apparatus to produce the reciprocating motion in which the time taken for travel in return stroke is less than the forward stroke. And so here in this model this part undergoes the reciprocating motion and its forward motion takes more time when compared to the return motion. So this is called the quick return mechanism. For more additional videos related to the concepts in mechanical engineering and design please subscribe my channel. And ok let's get into the video. So here I am going to draw 5 parts. First I am going to select new and make sure that your unit is in MMNS part solid. The first part I am going to design is the base part. Select the front plane and click on sketch. And go to sketch view. And here I'm going to draw a rectangle like this. And I want this dimension to be 750 and this dimension as 50. And this dimension as 75. And I'm going to change this dimension as 250. And then I'm going to draw another rectangle. Select the start point here and draw a corner rectangle with this end point here. I want this dimension to be 700. And then I'm going to use the trim tool to remove these unwanted entities. And then I want this dimension to be 12.5 and this dimension also 12.5. And then I'm going to draw a circle here. Select the center point and draw a circle. And then trim the unwanted entities using the trim tool. And here I'm going to draw the another circle on the outer rectangle. And again use the trim tool to remove the unwanted entities in your sketch. And now my sketch gets completed and I'm going to extrude this one. And here I'm going to extrude it to a value of 40 and then give a check mark to it. And then I'm going to select this face and then click on sketch view and here I'm going to draw the rectangle once again. This time I'm going to use the center rectangle. Select the center point and draw a rectangle like this. And I'm going to make this dimension as 400. And then this dimension as 25. And again I'm going to draw the another center rectangle. And I want this dimension as 225 and then this dimension as 50. And then I'm going to use the trim tool to remove the unwanted entities. And now my sketch gets completed and I'm going to extrude this one. I'm going to extrude it to a value of 40 once again. I'm going to flip the direction of it and then give a check mark to it. And then I again I'm going to select this face and then click on sketch view and here I'm going to draw a circle whose diameter is going to be 25. And then select the dimension command and select this point and this point and enter a value of 200. And then give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to use the extrude command and extrude it to a value of 50. And again select this face and click on sketch view and here also I'm going to draw the circle whose diameter of 25. And I'm going to select the dimension command and select the center point and this point and enter a value of 25. And now my sketch gets completed and I'm going to extend it to a value of 120 and then give a check mark to it. And now my base part is completed and I'm going to save this one. Select file, save as. I'm going to save this in the desktop by creating a new folder named shaper mechanism and then click on OK. And I'm going to name this file name as base path. And then click on OK. And now let me close this one. And now I'm going to create a new file. Select new and make sure that your unit is in MMNS path solid. 
and once again select the front plane and click on sketch view and here I'm going to draw a center rectangle select the center point and draw a rectangle like this I want this dimension to be 750 and this dimension as 50 and now I'm going to select the dimension command and I want this vertical dimension this vertical dimension as 225 and now I'm going to draw a circle and then use the trim tool to remove the advanced identities and next I'm going to use the line command and I'm going to draw a triangle like this and I'm going to use the trim tool to remove the unwanted entities and then I want this dimension to be 45 and then my sketch gets completed I'm, I'm going to give a check mark to it and now I'm going to extrude this one select the extrude command and now I'm going to extrude it to a value of 40 and then give a check mark to it and now select this face and then click on sketch view go to sketch view and here I'm going to draw a circle select the circle and select this as the center point with a diameter of 25 and I want this distance to be 445 and then give a check mark to it and now I'm going to extrude this one and this time I'm going to remove the material now my sketch gets completed and I'm going to save this one Select File Save As and I'm going to save in the Shaper Mechanism folder with a file name of Part 1 and then click on OK. And now I'm going to create the third part. Set the default unit and then I'm going to select the front plane and go to Sketch View and here I'm going to draw center rectangle once again. Select the center point and draw a rectangle with a value of 150 on the other side. Select the circle and draw a circle like this on both sides. And then use the trim tool to remove the unwanted entities. And now my sketch gets completed and I'm going to give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to exit this to a value of 40 and then give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to select this face and click on sketch and go to sketch view and here I'm going to draw a circle with a concentric point and with a diameter of 25. And then give a check mark to it. And again I'm going to extrude this to a value of 40 and give a check mark to it. And select this opposite face and click on sketch and go to sketch view and here also I'm going to draw a circle with the same concentric point with a diameter of 25 and again I'm going to extrude it to a value of 40 and now my part is completed and I'm going to save this one in the shape mechanism with the name of part 2 and let me close this one and uh, next I'm going to draw the fourth part I'm going to set the same unit and then select the front plane once again and go to sketch view and here again I'm going to draw a rectangle I want this dimension to be 450 and then this dimension to be 50 and once again here again I'm going to draw the another rectangle select the center point once again and draw a rectangle like this and I'm going to enter this dimension value as 25 and this dimension value as 387 and now I'm going to use the circle command and draw circle at the end of the rectangle and then use the trim tool to remove the unwanted entities select the trim tool and I'm going to remove the unwanted entities in my sketch And 
Again, I'm going to select the circle command and draw the circle at both the end points of the rectangle. And then use the trim tool to remove the same entities as similar in the previous case. And I'm going to select the circle and draw a circle with a diameter of 25 and draw the another circle on the other direction. And I have drawn two circles with a diameter of 25 and with a radius of 12.5. And then I'm going to give a check mark to it and my sketch gets completed and I'm going to extrude it with this one by selecting the extrude command. I'm going to extrude it to a value of 40 and then select the sketch. And then give a check mark to it. And now my path gets completed and I'm going to save this one. Select file, save as and I'm going to save in the shaper mechanism folder with a part 4, with a part 3. And then click on OK and let me close this one. And I'm going to draw the final part that is a circular disk. Set the default unit and then I'm going to select the front plane sketch view and here I'm going to draw a circle with a diameter value of 350. I'm going to draw another circle with a diameter of 25 and then give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to extrude this one to a value of 40 and give check mark to it. And again I'm going to select this face and then click on sketch and go to sketch view and here again I'm going to draw another circle with a diameter of 25 and I want this distance to be 131 and then give a check mark to it and now I'm going to use the extrude feature to extrude this one let me extrude it to a value of 40 and then give a check mark to it. And now my circular disk path is completed and I'm going to save this one. Select File Save As and here I'm going to save this in the Shaper Mechanism folder with the name of Part 4. And now I have successfully created all the parts in my model and now I'm going to use the and now I'm going to assemble all the parts. Select the assemble and first I'm going to assemble the base part. I'm going to make this as a default constraint and then give a check mark to it. Select the assemble once again and this time I'm going to import the part 4 that is a circular disk. I'm going to make this as a pin mechanism and select this axis of the base with the axis of the circular disk. And then select this face and with this face and make a coincident relation to it. And now my connection definition gets completed and give a check mark to it. And I'm going to select the assemble command and select the part 1. And here I'm going to select this face and this bottom face and make a coincident relation. And then select this side face. And then select this side face with this side face and make a coincident relation. And I'm going to just drag it like this. And then give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to assemble the other parts. Select the assemble command. And here I'm going to import the part 2. Here I'm going to set this axis. And here I'm going to make this as a pin mechanism and then select this axis with this axis. Let me tilt this one and select the other axis. And then let me move this bit and then select this outer face with this outer face and make a coincident relation to it and then give a check mark to it. And now I'm going to assemble the final part Select the assemble and now I'm going to put the part 3 and click on open. And here I'm going to make this as a coincident relation and then select this axis.
select this axis with this axis and make a coincident relation. Select a new set and select this axis with this axis and make a coincident relation. And once again select the new set and once again select the new set and here I'm going to select this face with this face and make a coincident relation to it. And I'm going to select the new set once again and this time I'm going to make this as a tangent constraint. Select this face with this face. And now I have successfully constrained my model and then give a check mark to it. And let me check this by using the drag components and just rotate this disk. And now my connection definition gets completed and my motion is working fine. And I'm going to animate this one by using the mechanism analysis. Go to the applications tab and select mechanism. And in the mechanism, I'm going to apply the servo motor connection. Select the servo motor and select this rotary axis. And I'm going to make this as an angular velocity. And in the profile details, I'm going to enter a value of 50. And then give a check mark to it. And let me add some color to it. I'm going to select the red color to the circular disk. And then green color to this link and then yellow color to this link and then blue color to the base part and white color to this link and then switch to the mechanism tab and now I'm going to animate this one. Let me switch to full screen and go to mechanism analysis and here I'm going to make this as a kinematic analysis and I want this end time as 500 and then select the run command. And now my model is working fine and here you see that the forward motion takes more time when compared to the return motion. This is called the quick return mechanism. So for more additional videos regarding concepts in mechanical engineering and design, please subscribe my channel and thank you for watching.